Hello and good afternoon. You're watching Updates at Noon with me, Mona Priya. Our headlines this afternoon. Omicron spreads rapidly in East Malaysia. Mandatory Takun entrepreneurs to have a business insurance. University of Malaysia Sarawak Unimas Institute of Health and Community Medicine Director Dr. David Pereira revealed that the Omicron variant has now replaced the Delta variant as the dominant circulating COVID-19 variant in the state. In his latest report to Srawa Disaster Management Committee, Chairman Dato Amar Douglas Ugahambas, he said the detection rate of 78% of the Omicron had been discovered from the surveillance data of positive cases from 3rd to 26th January this year. According to Dr. Pereira, 58 samples were successfully sequenced over the period, and out of these, 45 from the Omicron and 13 Delta variants of concern were detected. He added that the Omicron cases were detected in samples taken from Kuching, Samarahan, Cebu, Kapit, Muka, and Miri. In light of the increasing number of cases in the country, Dr. David, who is a member of Sarawak COVID-19 Vaccine Advisory Group, advised those who have yet to get their booster dose to do so immediately. Studies, he said, had shown that a booster dose was necessary to boost waning neutralizing antibody levels to protect from Omicron infection. He also reminded the people to continue complying strictly with a health standard operation procedure SOP and to avoid community gatherings if possible to prevent further spread of the virus. People's callousness and complacency over the standard operating procedures or SOPs during gatherings or when they are in public places are among the causes of the spike in daily COVID-19 cases in Sabah. State, local government and housing minister Datu Masidi Manjun said this could be seen when the wearing of face masks and physical distancing were not strictly adhered to. According to Datuk Masidi, a total of 47.55% of the new infections occur sporadically and the patients only realise they are infected when they experience COVID-19 symptoms. In a statement, he said the percentage of cases detected through symptomatic screenings is high in urban areas. For example, almost 50% of the 309 new cases in Kota Kinabalu are from the symptomatic screenings. Apart from that, he said, pending confirmation from the Sabah Health Department, the increase in new cases was likely due to the spread of the Omicron variant, spreading more rapidly than other strains of the virus. Datuk Masidi, who is also the Sabah COVID-19 spokesperson, said Sabah recorded 1,285 new infections yesterday, bringing the total cumulative figure to 252,930 cases, while 328 recoveries were reported, taking the total number of recovered cases to 241,031. Meanwhile, an enhanced movement control order EMCO will be implemented at Taman Rimba, Mentakap in Temerloh, Pahang, beginning today until 20th February. National Security Council Director General Datuk Rodzi Mat Saad said in a statement that the EMCO in the locality was enforced following the Ministry of Health's presentation on COVID-19 risk assessments and infection trends. In the statement posted on Facebook, he also informed that the EMCO at College of Vocational Sultan Ahmad Shah in Rompin Pahang has ended today as scheduled. Part of the Jalan Payat Trubong Bukit Kukus Pad Road was flooded on Saturday following heavy rains as the water flow was blocked by rubbish and dried leaves. The Pulau Pinang City Council in a statement said it had carried out immediate cleaning work and the affected section was now safe for road users. 
The statement said that based on MBPP inspection of the area, it concluded that the flash flood was due to heavy rain in the area and dried leaves as well as rubbish had prevented proper flow of water into the drainage system. MBPP also called on the public to work together with the council in maintaining cleanliness and to stop throwing rubbish indiscriminately to prevent a recurrence. Stagnant water had accumulated at the end of Jalan Payatrubong Pad Road, Bukit Kukus, touted as the highest elevated highway in Malaysia following heavy rains on Saturday. A 10-second video showing the pool of water which went viral on social media received much criticism, with some expressing disappointment over the poor drainage system along with the newly launched road. The Malaysian Meteorological Department, Met Malaysia, has issued continuous rain warning at the alert level in Rompeng Pahang, as well as Mersing and Kota Tinggi in Johor from today until tomorrow. In a statement, Met Malaysia also warned of continuous rain at the alert level in two districts in Sabah, namely Kudat and several areas in Sandakan. The statement read that the areas involved in Sandakan are Telupit, Kinabatangan and Beluran. On 3rd February, Met Malaysia said that several episodes of heavy rainfall are expected to occur, especially on the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia, West Sarawak and East Sabah until March, following the northeast monsoon phase which began on 3rd November last year. Now, in light of the spike in COVID-19 cases, Barisan National is looking at the experience it gained during Malacca and Surawa elections as a guide to managing their campaign in the Johor polls. Johor Barisan Information Chief Dato Sri Dr. Adham Baba said that they would be following closely when the Election Commission, or EC, announces the standard operating procedures for the state elections. Kita lebih yakin kali ini dengan adanya vaksin yang telah diberikan sebagai pelindung pihak berkuasa dalam mengendalikan SOP ini dan juga SPR tentu sekali akan melindungi pengundi-pengundi itu daripada terjejas dengan jangkitan. Dato Sri Dr. Adham also said that Barisan was looking at fully utilising electronic and digital media platforms during the campaign period, especially for new candidates, if the SOP did not allow for face-to-face -face campaigning. Meanwhile, he said BN will present a manifesto that will meet the needs of all levels of society in the upcoming Johor State election. According to the Science, Technology and Innovations Minister, it will cover all demographic groups, including in terms of age, location and new voters as well as outline five main objectives to ensure that the state government formed is a strong and stable one. Dato Sri Dr. Adham said this at a gathering with media practitioners in Johor Bahru yesterday. Young reporter Mohamad Hazik Mohamad Ashraf from Bukit Selambau, Sungai Petani, who gained internet fame with his slick reporting style on the discovery of a large python at a public market, has achieved his dream of interviewing the Prime Minister. The 12-year-old met Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob at a hotel in Alostak, Kedah yesterday and was given the opportunity to interview the country's number one leader. Let's take a look. During the interview, Mohamed Hazik, who suffers from thalassemia, asked several questions to the Prime Minister, including about his favourite food, daily routine and whether he was familiar with kampong cuisine. The Prime Minister was also asked about his plans if given the opportunity to lead the country for another 10 years, to which Dato Sri Ismail Sabri replied that he hoped to eradicate poverty and the hardcore poor by 2025. After the interview session, Mohamed Hazik, who was accompanied by his mother, Nur Shakila Zainul, 33, and several other family members, said he was honoured to have been able to meet and interview the Prime Minister. Earlier, the media reported that it was Mohamed Hazik's dream to meet and interview the country's number one leader, whom he only saw on television and newspapers. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri is in the state to attend the Northern Corridor Implementation Authority Council meeting and officiate the Kedah Rubber City project in Kuala Narang today. 
On another note, Mohamed Hazik was also honoured with a visit to Amanjaya Fire and Rescue Department Fire Station in Sungai Petani yesterday. Present were Kedah Fire and Rescue Department Director Sayani Saidon and Deputy Shufaat Kamarun. Perasaan saya amat-amat seronok sangat dapat apa ni menaiki jentera bomba. Hajat saya pernah tercapai nak naik EMRS, nak naik uh, jentera bomba. Lepas tu kan tidak naik ambulans JPAM je kan. Ha, ini saya boleh dapat menaiki, saya boleh menaiki bomba EMRS lah. Dahsyat lah. Amat-amat ha, dahsyat dan amat-amat laju sekali. Uh, saya harap uh, ini memberi satu uh, siapa, uh, pengalaman baru pada Adik Aziz. Ya, sebab dia... Um, apa ni, menunjukkan minat yang sangat mendalam ke Jabatan Mombor. Jadi ini juga satu kalau tadi dengan kereta Haziq tadi ini dapat menarik minat orang ramai, harapnya dia dapat uh, memberi penghayatan tentang, uh, tentang uh, apa bidang kejaya bombo ni lah. The elder of two children who appeared in full firefighter uniform arrived at the fire station in a fire engine that later took part in a firefighting demonstration. He was later awarded with an appreciation certificate and school gear before being taken for a tour at the fire station. Mohamed Hazik shot to fame after a Facebook video of him reporting the discovery of a python at a wet market in Bukit Selamba went viral last month. To be certain on whether certain information are true or false, follow these tips. Accuracy. Is the news source a credible person or research? Authority. Identify the author of the news and ensure that they are experts in the field or whatever is being written about. Currency. Check the publication date. It may be an old article that was resurfaced for publicity and traction. Coverage. If the news is too short and not specific, it is advisable that you ignore it. Objective. Evaluate the possible purposes of a publication if it serves no benefit or instead damaging and may result in chaos, it is better to avoid sharing. Tidak pasti, jangan kongsi. Trailer driver killed, seven injured in three vehicle crash. Micro-entrepreneurs under the National Entrepreneur Group Economic Fund, Takon, will be required to have a business insurance scheme to protect them from any risks. Minister of Entrepreneur and Cooperative Development, Medek Tan Sri No Oma said the scheme implemented with the Social Security Organization, SOXO, only required entrepreneurs to pay about 13 ringgit per month to get insurance protection. Tansri No said insurance companies were also encouraged to expand their insurance coverage schemes to the business sector as currently no insurance company had included natural disasters in their insurance coverage except for vehicles, which is optional. Sebab sekarang ni kita tahu keadaan macam-macam boleh berlaku. Jadi kalau kita dapat, kalau insurance, pihak insurance boleh dapat memikirkan, mengembangkan lagi uh, daripada dia punya sektor-sektor untuk uh, jual insurans eh, kepada syarikat pada usahawan saya ingat itu uh, amat baik sekali saya percaya bila dah ada bencana alam banjir yang berlaku dan berbagai lagi bencana jadi mungkin dah sampai masa eh, usahawan dia mula fikir bukan saja nak beli kereta nak lindung kereta saja tapi juga Permis-permis perniagaan dan juga latar-latar yang lain. He said this to reporters after officiating the opening of the Prestige Legacy Insurance Company Administration Building in Wangsamaju yesterday. A 37-year-old trailer driver was killed while seven other individuals were injured in a crash involving the trailer, a car and a motorcycle at kilometre 34 of Jalan Raya Timur Barat, Tasik Banding, Gerik, yesterday. 
In a statement last night, a spokesman for the Perak Fire and Rescue Department said the department was notified of the incident at about 4.42 p.m. He said the department immediately deployed members and officers from the Gurik Fire and Rescue Station to the scene and found the collision of the three vehicles had led to the death of the trailer driver. The deceased has been identified as Nur Amin Mohamed Ismail, 37. According to the spokesperson, those injured are the driver's 38-year-old assistant, a family in the Proton Saga car, including a husband, wife and their three children, aged between 5 and 8, and the motorcyclists. In addition, he said the fire brigade used special equipment to remove the trapped victims before they were sent to the Greek hospital, while the trailer driver's body was handed over to the police. And that's it from us this afternoon. In our top story today, Omicron spreads rapidly in East Malaysia. News at 10 comes on this evening on My Freeview's Berita RTM News Channel. I'm Mohana Priya. Thank you for your company.